Can you remember a time when you were eight years old? You probably remember a favorite game, a best friend, a family vacation, or maybe a holiday tradition. When I was eight, I learned of a young girl at my school who had never had a meal outside the free and reduced breakfast and lunch program. My family and the girl's teacher organized a surprise for her family by bringing food and gifts for Christmas. At the time, I thought, it's just this one family. That hunger it can't be that widespread of a problem. But I was only eight. So I didn't realize just how widespread childhood hunger is. In fact, an estimated 13 million children suffer from food insecurity, meaning they don't know where their next meal is coming from or even when it will be. To put that in perspective, that's one in seven kids in the United States or one in five kids in Texas. This weighed heavily on my heart as a Hispanic student living in a single parent, single income household, who I myself was a recipient of the free and reduced lunches, I knew how important a nourishing meal is. I knew if I didn't eat, then my grades would suffer and I just wouldn't do well. And I wanted all my classmates to have an equal opportunity at success. But I, again, I was only eight. What could I really even do? So I reached out to the food bank to try to volunteer there. And I was told I was too young to volunteer. Okay, I'll try a smaller food pantry. Another no. I'll try a food pantry and this time I'll say my mom is gonna come with me. Again, no. And I remember feeling so discouraged, but I really wanted to help my classmates. So I started thinking of other ways I could help. And I remembered, I can grow vegetables from seeds. And I can start a garden at my elementary school to donate the produce to the kids who need it. And gardening is something that's special to me. My mom taught me how to garden when I was really little. And her grandfather taught her how to garden when she was little. So one day after school, during gardening club, I went up to the gardening club advisor and told him my idea to use this abandoned plot of the school garden to be able to grow the produce there. And he told me he'd think about it. And then at the end of the gardening club, he pulled me aside and took me to the principal to pitch my idea to her. And the whole time, I remember while I was telling her my idea, she sat there silently, nodding her head and just taking notes in her little notebook. And when I was done, I remember telling myself, I'm gonna get another no. And after a few moments, she said yes. And she actually said yes. And I remember being so excited. But then I remembered, I'm only eight. I don't have a job. How am I going to afford this? So I put together a wish list and I shared my idea with anyone who would listen. And then suddenly donations started rolling in and the people who couldn't donate asked how they could help. I, even was, I was even contacted by our local Home Depot who wanted to send a team of volunteers and a few items from my wish list to help me. Now comes the build day. And I remember being so happy seeing all the donations of volunteers and the Home Depot truck arriving. And when the Home Depot truck arrived, the volunteers came out of the truck and they didn't give me a few items for my list. They gave me my, my entire wish list and more. And on that day, my first giving garden was started. And that would be the first of six gardens around the Austin area and the beginning of my nine year journey to help fight hunger. Throughout my nine years, I have grown and donated over 23,000 pounds of produce. That's about the same weight as two average adult elephants. I've educated over 15,000 students, 
provided over 3,000 hot, healthy meals, and completed over 14,000 hours of community service. In addition to leading my own nonprofit, I also played leadership roles in other organizations. I'm a part of Katie's Crops, a national youth-based organization that empowers youth to start a garden in their community to fight hunger. As both a grower and a youth leader mentor, and two years ago, I was, I was invited to serve on their board of directors to help make decisions so I can mold and grow the organization. I'm also a part of No Kid Hungry as a youth ambassador and a digital youth ambassador where I help organize fundraisers and childhood hunger relief campaigns. And I was also nominated and ended up be, being one of the top five finalists for Time Magazine's first ever Kid of the Year Awards. And in order to have a dignified and equitable, equitable method of distributing my produce, I started, I started what I call pop-up farmer's markets, where I go to a park in East Austin, I set up a table, the produce on it, and people can just come by and take whatever they need. One Saturday, an older woman came by, and I recognized her having come by a few weeks before. With tears in her eyes, she told me how she was so thankful that I had my pop up farmer's market that day, because a few weeks before, she had to make the difficult decision of paying her utility bills over buying groceries. And she lived on a fixed income. So that moment, no, getting to see the direct impact I had is one of my biggest motivations. Back when I was in high school, one of my school administrators told me my work was meaningless, that I should just stop that it's getting in the way of my academics, that I should just let my gardens die and focus on school. Deep down in my heart, I knew this wasn't true, but I was told that by a school administrator, someone in a leadership position, someone who is supposed to support students and has such a great influence on them. And I began thinking about stopping, but then, I, but that was until Viola Davis' speech at the Prudential Spirit of Community Awards. She talked about how there are always going to be people in the world who try to put, them, put you down to make themselves feel better. And there are going to be people who fear the greatness of others because they know they're not doing as much to help people. Those words have stuck with me, and any time I felt down, they've helped me maintain my positivity throughout. Throughout my journey, I've often been reminded of a quote from Dr. Seuss's Horton Hears a Who. A person's a person, no matter how small. Not only are the people I help important, but it's also important to remember, you can make a difference no matter what your passion is. You don't have to go out and start a nonprofit. You don't have to go out with the mindset of changing the world. But something, you can do something as simple as deliver meals for Meals on Wheels to the homebound elderly. You can donate food, donate clothes to a refugee center. Give warm socks and mittens to homeless on a cold day. You can donate food to a food bank, walk a dog at a shelter, or even just donate blood you may not always get to see the direct impact you have on someone, but always remember, every little thing make, makes a great difference on someone's life for the better. And always remember, be a good human. <laughs>